You're watching That Love Will Bowling Live and welcome to part three of our Heartland series. Yes, we've come northeast and we've just seen a beautiful sunrise right here on Coney Island in Pongo. So first port of call this morning was to see the epic sunrise over northeastern Singapore. Absolutely, so we're right here sat on the beach but we couldn't come without bringing some coffee and also some breakfast which was absolutely gorgeous to have a little picnic on the beach. So we entered Coney Island via the eastern entrance. We actually took a cab here this morning and then it was about a 20, 25 minute walk through Coney Island, walking on the road to get here. Yeah, we're on Beach Connect to Sea and we had our breakfast, but do be aware if you are gonna bring some food, there are a lot of monkeys around, so do be aware. So for me, the really exciting thing, as soon as I saw the beach, I could smell the sea. It was so exciting. I ran and I think it just kind of brought back all those emotions as a little kid, you know, when you'd see the sea. And uh, especially as we've not actually been to the beach for maybe over two years. I think the last time we were actually at a beach was in 2020. So for those of you who are watching outside of Singapore, you may realize that we're at a place called Coney Island and we've got the forest bits behind us, we've got the sea, we've got the beach that we're standing on right now. So yeah, I don't think you'd think of this if you thought of Coney Island. Yeah, you might think of somewhere in New York, which is a huge amusement park, and this place couldn't be further from that. But it actually takes its name from the same place because I think in the 50s, the Harper brothers actually sold this whole island to an Indian businessman who wanted to develop Coney Island as an amusement park. Yeah, so when we first moved to Singapore and we were told you should go to Coney Island by Rianne's aunt, we were like, we thought it would be like a rundown amusement place. Yeah. So actually coming here for the first time today, it's amazing to see what it actually is. Yeah, it's really full of lots of different plants, birds, and of course, as we mentioned, the sea. You know Singapore is a very sustainable country but right here on Coney Island it's an ecologically sustainable island and they reuse a lot of things such as this wood which comes from the Casuarina trees right here on the island. to the mangrove forest and mangroves are so important right now especially with climate change going on not only do they help with releasing oxygen in the air but they also help filter below in the water plus they also help the erosion of the soils <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, Coney Island is quite rustic and to maintain that, lots of environmental initiatives were formed. So for example, in 2014, lots of the Causarina trees fell down. They didn't get rid of them. What they did was recycle them. They made signs, as Rianne showed you earlier. They made benches and they even made this boardwalk that I'm standing on right now. So another cool thing about Coney Island, we talked earlier about how they reused the wood when the storm happened in 2014 and they reused the Causarina trees. 
the good thing that we when we read online is that it was 100 self-sufficient so if you look behind me this shelter it actually has stuff growing on top so it stops the rainwater from falling they will collect the rainwater they will use it in the toilets they'll use it in all manner of different ways to make sure this place is sustainable as possible <laughs> So one thing that I've really noticed about being here on Coney Island, it's very different to other nature parks in Singapore because it just feels very wild and very open and free. And the cool thing that we've seen here is we've seen an array of different kinds of people from dog walkers to guys walking with their remote control cars to TikTokers and people like nature lovers like myself and Sam. So it's really cool to see such a group, a different group of people all around Singapore here on Coney Island. being an ecologically sustainable place and it being completely off the grid it's a fantastic place for many many species of bird I believe over 80 different kinds of birds uh, right here you might be able to hear them as I'm talking we haven't been able to spot any but we can certainly hear them and it's so great that they're able to live freely right here So we hope you've enjoyed our small little tour of Coney Island for our Heartland series. As we mentioned, this is the first time that we've actually been here and we've really been impressed. We've really enjoyed ourselves. We got here really early, enjoyed the beach. We've had a wonderful stroll, walk around the whole place. We came in on the east, we're now on the west. Yeah, absolutely. As you can see behind us, there's a lot of people here. It's getting kind of busy. So now we're heading on to our next destination, which is Pongol Waterway. So we've made it a couple of kilometers down from Coney Island and now we're at Pungol Waterway Park. So as you can maybe see or hear just behind us there's a lot a lot of construction. Actually HDB are building many BTOs around this area and Pongol was actually chosen as a I guess an experiment in a way to make it an independent waterway town and as you can see right behind us there is plenty of water. <laughs> behind me is Pongol Waterway and in fact it's a man-made 4.2 kilometer waterway and the whole of this park actually has four main themes which is green gallery, recreation zone, heritage zone and nature cove. So it really just shows how well thought out Pongol is as a town which is relatively a newer town in comparison to a lot of the older HDB Heartland estates. So as we're walking around the park, we just spotted these. If anyone has any idea what they are, please put in the comments below because we'd really like to find out what they are. So this being our first trip to Pongo, the really cool thing, it doesn't feel like a really in Singapore. We've seen so many bicycles up and down and even the boats just here behind us. And the waterway kind of resembles like a canal. We've seen so many different bridges as well. So it kind of feels like you may be in Amsterdam or somewhere in Europe. So it's a really cool like vibe right here. One thing we can really appreciate as expats here in Singapore is that there is history everywhere and if you do want to learn 
if you want to learn about the history, if you want to learn about the places that you live, the heartlands, you have all this information here. So as you can see, this is a map of Singapore. You have Pulau Ubin up here, which I'm sure lots of people have explored. You've got Pungol where we are now. And then you've got this information here, which talks about Pungol in the past. And it says, it's believed that Pongol in Malay means hurling sticks at branches to bring the fruits down. Now, we didn't know that. We've done lots of reading, information to try and learn as much as we can about Pongol. But still, you can come down to the place and learn more just by reading. And there's lots of them scattered around as well. on Pongo, a thing that will come up time and time again is how it's becoming a water point town and that's been a real key emphasis for Pongo as it develops and you can see it really in action here right by the water there's so many cyclists people with their children on scooters things like that and enjoying the sunshine I think it's a completely different side of Singapore that I've personally not seen and a really laid-back energy to the place i feel very calm here by the water and i think definitely you need to come and experience this for yourself so with that being said we're going to leave the water right now and with every heartlands video we always find the best makan that you can in each place so i think right now we're going to go fill our stomachs hot day here and we've come for a boiling steaming bowl of porridge we're at Huang Hongji porridge and I really enjoy porridge and my favorite is usually century egg but this one the special thing about this place is they actually have pig fried pig's intestine on top uh, to my knowledge I've never eaten pig's intestine before so it's definitely gonna be an experience and uh, I hope I like it I thought it was going to be a bit more, I don't know what intestinally would taste like, but it actually tastes really good. Just like pork crackling that we would have in the UK. But I think the real test would be Sam because he's never had porridge ever before. So I'm going to film his reaction now. So as Rianne said, I've never had porridge before, but seeing her reaction, I think I'm going to enjoy this. But I didn't really know what to expect. So... Go for a small bite. Actually, it's really creamy. Um, the porridge itself, I put lots of pepper in, so you do get that flavor as well, but I think even though it's hot out here, this is a nice dish to go with the heat. It's kind of like cooling, refreshing. Yeah, it's really nice. So, certainly feeling the heat after eating our porridge. I think for me personally, I probably have better the consistency is a little bit watery but the reason why we did want to come here even though it's not a main hawker center or anything like that it's actually just in an HDB estate is because uh, Huang Hongji has actually I think it started in um, Tiong Bahru about 40 years ago and actually it moved to Pongo not too long ago but the queue is actually incredible just behind me or just in front of me I should say there it's just been people coming and going having their porridge so and I think the the pig intestine is something that is an acquired taste I did like it to begin with but I gave most of mine to Sam
So episode three of our Heartland series in the bag and we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed making it. We did Coney Island, we went to the Pongal Water Point Park and we've also, well I've also experienced porridge for the first time. Yeah, the really great thing about Pongal, which I've enjoyed, is you can see how clear the town planning is around building it around the waterway. But I mean, having said that, just behind us here and also next to us, uh, the, they're in the HDB estate, they're growing their own fruits and vegetables. So you can really tell that they're taking, you know, sustainability and being eco-conscious really into the core design of this town. Yeah, and seeing as we're look, currently looking for a place to live, I think this in five to ten years time once the construction has died down because there's a lot of back order on the BTOs at the moment once that is out of the way this will be a fantastic place to live not saying it isn't already but I think in five to ten years once the construction once the noise goes down it will be such a great place to live yeah absolutely and I think you know even here we're in an HDB estate right now you can tell that the design of it is so new and modern because we're from a more mature estate so it's been really awesome to see the differences in new design and new architecture and I think a whole new place in Singapore which we've explored. Yeah we have really loved exploring Bongol we hope as I've said we hope you've enjoyed it if you have please like it it really does help spread it to more people more people that haven't watched our channel before and if you've watched a few of our videos and you've liked them and you haven't subscribed don't hesitate it's free click that button subscribe to our channel and we will be providing more and more content throughout this year and the years to come see you on the next one